Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to talk about the type 1 sum of squares. So as a reminder, this is our model, y equals x beta plus air, epsilon, where epsilon is multivariate normal with mean vector 0 and variance covariance matrices. And normally we don't have to assume a distribution, but we're going to find distributions of certain quadratic forms and then it requires us to have uh, this, this assumption. In the previous video, we looked at partitioning the total uh, uh, variability, and so that would be uh, previous video 27, and also in previous video 7, we talk about the uh, partitioning the total variability and why it's important. So as a reminder, the total the sum of squares total is equal to the sum of squares regression plus sum of squares residual. And it turned out when this is big, this is small, it means the model is useful. When this is small and the residual or the error is big, then the model is not useful. And in scalar notation, it's this. <clears throat> and a couple of notes here is that the regression sum of squares depends upon the model right? Y hat. Same for the residual sum of squares, depends upon the model. Um, the total sum of squares is not. Now here's a note which we'll uh, justify in a second. The sum of squares regression increases with the addition of each predictor variable, or equivalently the sum of squares residual decreases. <coughs> and the answer is why? And here's the reason. Here's a quick little justification for that. But then we'll prove it in more detail. Um, let's say we collect data points and we have our first data point is y1 and then we have 10 regressor variables with it. So that's one variable or data point we set it aside. We keep doing it until we get n data points. So yn plus the 10 regressors associated with it. Now we only use five of the regressors and we calculate a, a multiple linear regression model and we calculate the sum of squares total, the regression, and the residual. Well, they have numbers. Now let's redo it. Instead of using five regressors, we use ten regressors, and we calculate these sums of squares total, regression, and residual, and look at them. Well, the sum of squares total is, is exactly the same. It only depends upon the y's. It has nothing to do with x's or, or the fitted model or anything. This is constant. What changes are these, and when we add variables, this automatically goes up, and this automatically goes down. Now the big question is, does it go up enough to justify saying those regressors are helpful in predicting Y's? And we'll talk more about that later. But now here's a quick little proof of why it increases. Now notice, no, or equivalently, the residual decreases, right? If this increases, this has to go down because that stays the same. So we use least squares to find estimates for the beta parameters, right? Nothing new there. So we let this, we create a function Q, and it's a function of the betas, which is the sum of the squared error terms, right? Then we have to put it in terms of, you know, we have to bring in the beta parameters somehow. So epsilon is actually y minus this x beta, and same here. So this is the same as this. But now this is a function of betas which we can min minimize. So then we start taking partial derivatives to minimize. Now here's the big note, that if we're going to minimize something, and we, only, and we only have two parameters to play with, we can get it so small. We can minimize it to a certain point. But if the data, the y's don't change, um, and now we want to minimize it with 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 three bait with three parameters, you know, we have to do at least as well as this. So it can only get smaller, right? It, it, it won't get bigger because then you know these two make it that, and so adding one more, we we can just get a little bit smaller. And every parameter that we add. And remember, adding a parameter is adding a regressor. So every predictor variable or a regressor that we add to a model 
the residual sum of squares goes down, which means the regression sum of squares goes up. And that's a quick justification. Now, I need to introduce some general notation that we're going to use over the next three, four, five videos. And it's this. So R of beta 2 given beta 1. And notice there's vector signs over these. Now, I don't have to have vector signs. It could just be one beta parameter. <laughs> but here, there's so many beta parameters in this vector, and there's so many beta parameters in this vector. This number is the increase in sum of squares regression when these beta two, when these beta parameters or regressors are added to the model that already contains beta one. <coughs> so it's this. So this is the sum of squares regression when we have all the beta parameters in here. So there's lots of them in here, minus the regression sum of squares when we just have the beta one parameter. Now, equivalently, we could think about this as residual, right? Because this is um, the total minus the residual, and this is total minus residual. You can do the math, and you can come up with this. <clears throat> and we're going to use this. Now, the goal is we want regressors that significantly increase the sum of squares regression. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> pardon me, I had a frog in my throat. The sum of squares regression with beta zero or beta zero is zero, and the question is why. Now remember the sum of squares regression is the little differences between the mean and the regression line, right? And that's what we're interested in and to see if that variability is accounted for by the regression line. And so when we have a model with just beta zero in it, and I forget which beta, uh, video, previous video we discussed this, the least squares estimate is the mean, it's y bar. So when we look at the sum of squares regression, we're taking y bar minus y bar, which is zero. And so there's no regression, sum of squares regression in that case. So the type one sums of squares are, is this. So we look and notice there's no vector signs here. So it's just the individual vector. So it's r beta one, beta zero. So it's the sum of squares regression with beta 0 and beta 1 minus sum of squares regression with beta 0. But remember, this is 0. So it's the increase in the sum of squares regression when we add beta 1 to the model. Here, it's beta 2, beta 0, beta 1. So it's the, sum of, the increase in sum of squares regression when we add it to the model over just having beta 0 and beta 1. And then we keep doing that until we get to the kth beta parameter, so beta k, and, and there's beta 0 through beta k minus 1 in, in already in the model. So it's the increase in the sum of squares regression when we add that one beta parameter over all the previous betas in the model. Now, that's it. That's the sum of squares, uh, type 1 sum of squares. So a note is that if we add these up, and this is the notation that I try to use. So we have beta i, which is just one beta parameter, and I, I use beta i minus one vector symbol, which means all the previous you know beta parameters. And, and so this sum is supposed to be this sum. And if we look at that, this is zero, but that cancels with that, this cancels with it. So they all cancel except for this last one, right? Well, that and this last one. But that's zero. So this is and we're, so when we add them, it's the sum of squares regression. So the type one sums of squares partitions the sum of squares regression. So we partition the total sum of squares into the regression sum of squares and residual sum of squares. Then we take the regression sum of squares and partition it into these k type one sums of squares, which is kind of interesting in itself. Now. What I like to do is we have to think about this in matrix notation because it's going to make uh, der uh, deriving the means and, and distributions and hypothesis tests easier in my in my mind. So let's let's drive these in matrix notation. So let's examine this. So this means we're we're adding the ith beta parameter 
to a model that already has the previous, you know, beta zero to beta i minus one parameters. And so, as we mentioned above, it's this. Oh, okay, so that should not be a vector because, no, it is a vector. Yeah, because we're looking, now all of them are in the model, right? Yeah, so all of them are in the model minus that when we don't have the ith beta in there. So that, it's the increase. So the full model is this. So we have all I, you know, regressors. And in, in matrix notation, it's this. And previously we've uh, demonstrated that the sum of squares regression is this quadratic form. Now notice that this is the hat matrix, the hat matrix. So it's a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. But here X only has you know, I plus one columns or I regressors. So that's why that I is there. Now the reduced model mean, you know, from this one, we take out the I term and we get this. And in matrix notation, it's this. And then the sum of squares regression would be this. And notice the hat matrix is now I minus one. So it has, you know, that, that I th regressor taken out. It's still a it's still a perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space, but it's just a subset of this one. So now let's look at this uh, regression, the type one sum of squares. So this is sum of squares with all of them in it. You know, we're only up to the ith regressor, and that's the i minus one. So we can right factor out a y and left factor out a y, and then we get, you know, this. The J's cancel and we get this. And we're done. <coughs> now, perhaps on a side note, and I don't know how long the video is going to go, this is a perpendicular projection matrix under the column space of X, where there's I plus one columns. This is a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X, where there are I columns, right? We've taken out that ith one. So the column space of this is actually a subset of the column space of this. Now, if you go back onto some of my videos where I look at perpendicular projection matrices, then we instantly know that this is a perpendicular projection matrix. So when we take Y times this, it actually projects it onto the column space of X, this column space of X, perpendicular to this column space of X. So it lies in that column space of X, but perpendicular to here. Okay, that's a side note. I didn't really mean to talk about that. So now let's find the expected value of the type one sum of squares, which is, which is this. And we just determine in matrix notation it's this. And we're going to use the mean, the covariance of quadratic forms. I have a video on that. And it instantly follows from it. So this expected value is the trace of this matrix times the variance covariance matrix, so it's the trace of that product, and times the mean of y, times this product, times the mean of y. Okay. Well, the trace of this, this is constant, so it can come out front. That is i, so i times this, you get this. The trace of these come in, they're perpendicular projection matrix. Um, so the this is i plus 1, and this is i, so it's just 1. Well, that, that's kind of interesting. The rank of that is 1. That will play a part down later in the video. And there's nothing special that we can do with these. And we're done. Now, when I see this, that the expected value of this um, type 1 sum of squares is, is always at least as big as sigma squared. And the reason why is since this is a perpendicular projection matrix, or, or even just idempotent will work too, is that this is this quadratic form is positive semi-definite so it's, it's zero or more for any vectors so it's all right so move on so the distribution of this uh, type one sum of squares notice i have to put a sigma squared under it i'm going to uh, make use of the distribution of quadratic forms it's a video i have out and uh, the distribution of y is is this as we've known now, the way my mind works in using these theorems, I like to have this variance-covariance matrix just I. So I pre-multiply 
uh, y by 1 over sigma and then it makes it multivariate normal with this mean and variance covariance matrix i. Now to use this the quadratic form in this type 1 sum of squares which is this piece here um, has to meet some properties and so it, it's symmetric right because these are perpendicular these are hat matrices perpendicular projection matrices they're symmetric so this makes this symmetric this is in the column space of this and that plays a part for this uh, item potent when we multiply these together we get i times i that's the hat matrix item potent so we just get hi back here hi is in the column space of hi and this projects back onto its own column space so we get this back same rationale here this is a perpendicular projects matrix so we get hi back we get cancel cancel and we're left with this so it's item potent so now to use the theorem uh, distribution of quadratic forms then we just instantly go since this type 1 sum of squares is this and, and oh the rank of this piece right here was 1 which we set up above which is this the non-centrality parameter is the mean of this times this times this but remember the mean of y was xi beta i over sigma same here so that's where we get the sigma squared so it's a non-central chi-square distribution. Okay, well that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video, subscribe, and in the next video we're going to talk about the type 2 sum of squares. Uh, enjoy. Talk to you then. Bye.